Now we're going to talk about heat loss. This slide shows all the steps that mechanical systems engineers will go through to determine the size of the heating and cooling equipment that is needed for a building. Here we will be primarily focusing on the first two steps. The other steps will be explored in a future unit of study, perhaps next year. When you're looking at the size of a system for a building, the primary method of heat transfer you will be using will be conduction. When it is winter time, the heat will try to travel through the walls from the interior to the exterior. In the summer, it'll be reversed. The heat will try to get into your house to make it warmer. This is why parents typically tell kids to keep the doors and windows closed. Some key terms are noted here for heat loss. Design temperature difference is just delta T. This is the temperature difference between the outside of the structure and the temperature on the inside of the structure. Infiltration will also have to be considered. When windows and doors are installed, some, where there are typically some air gaps around the outside and these items can also be opened and closed. So infiltration is a consideration for this. Resistivity, is how much a material can resist heat change. For example, insulation has a very is very resistive and is good to regulate temperature. Glass, however, windows, has a poor resistivity and heat travels through very quickly. So in homes with more windows have a higher heating and cooling cost. The U factor is the reciprocal of the resistivity. This is what engineers need to use for their calculations because they're using the equation Q equals UA delta T. This slide begins to outline the steps to find, heating, find heat loss. We must consider all surfaces. The first is the walls. Now this includes the actual walls, the windows, and the doors. The windows and the doors are a part of the walls of the structure, so they must be considered but they need to be considered separately because they're made up of different materials. So to begin, you need to find the surface area of your walls. And please keep in mind, we will work on exterior walls only. You will subtract the surface area of any windows and doors. Then you need to find the U factor for the cross section of the wall. To do this, you're gonna add all the resistivity values and take the reciprocal of the sum. Next, you'll need to find the uh, temperature change, delta T. Then you use the equation to find the heat loss. This is Q equals UA delta T. You need to do this for the walls, the windows, and the doors. Now you'll need to pretty much do the same thing for the ceiling and the floor. For the ceiling, you consider the top floor only. This is because only the ceiling on the top floor is exposed to the outside. The resistivities and U factors will be different because it has a different cross section. The floor needs to have this done as well. You only calculate this for the floors over unheated areas. This includes a crawl space under the building or the concrete slab foundation at the very bottom. Now keep in mind that the temperature difference delta T may be different because the temperature is different in the ground or the crawl space versus the outside air. For temperatures below the surface of the earth, you should assume a constant temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit, unless it is otherwise specified. Now we need to calculate loads for infiltration. There are two methods to use. We are not going to be using the air change method, so we can skip this slide. The crack method is more commonly used. In this case, we need to make sure that we calculate the perimeter of all the windows and the doors. When we find the perimeter of the windows, we take 75% of that. We do this by multiplying by 0.75. We add all the perimeters together. We need to make sure that this is in feet. This value will be your CFM in this equation. We calculate the heat loss to infiltration by using this equation. Q equals 1.08 CFM delta T. Now there are some special, special considerations for the crack, crack method that we need, we need to mention. Basically, wind can only travel in one direction at a time. 
For simplicity's sake, we will say it'll either travel north to south or east to west. Therefore, infiltration needs to be considered on one set of opposite walls. So when you're calculating heat loss from infiltration, you consider the set of opposite walls that have the higher CFM value only. This is the worst case scenario. We will see this more in the example that will, I will go over soon. We will not be considering ventilation load, so we are going to skip this slide. Now we are ready for the final part of our calculation. We should have calculated the Q value for the walls, the windows, the door, ceiling, floor, and infiltration. We simply need to add all of these values together and the result will be our total heat loss for the system that we need. Now let's do some practice problems together. <laughs> 